of course I couldn't resist not, not to help them. Um, and I can't tell you how pleased I am that they are already in the 25th uh, week of pregnancy. Um, they really deserve it. I mean, it also tells us and learns us that um, infinity can, you know, can um, uh, affect anybody. It doesn't matter where you come from or what your age is. Uh, and this time it was uh, Chris and Christy. And, uh, but I'm very pleased and they really deserve it to be happy. Tambra Foundation is based on three pillars, so it's on social work, it's on recent development and also on education uh, with the Tambra Lab. Um, but every year we help uh, a few couples because we really believe that money shouldn't be an obstacle to build a family. Mm -hmm. And uh, this time we help them and uh, yeah, I can't tell you how, how happy we are as well. I was 16 and Andy just after a number of tests and just mm -hmm. a number of things, scans, just all the usual investigations and it turned out I was going through the menopause right. 16. Mm -hmm. But when they tell you that 16, Andrew, when they say you need an IVF, you need donor eggs, you're just like it's so overwhelming. You're young, you don't understand. Yeah, yeah. So I just, mm -hmm. my, my mum was told that and I just went ahead, went to school, never thought nothing enough. I didn't think nothing enough, but it's always the back of my mind, but I always mm. thought I'm young, you know, I could fall pregnant naturally. Yeah, but I didn't realise the serious of until I met Chris. Yeah. And we were together over a year. Yep. And then we were talked about it and then we decided, you know, we want to be parents. Yes. And then we when we did our own research, we realised that it was hard to get an egg donor in, in the UK. Yeah. And then we started to realise that we need to get moving. We need to start this process. Andrew Coots from the International Fertility Company. We are an independent company. Um, we provide advice to anyone who is looking for fertility treatment, either within their own country or perhaps more importantly for the, some of the people that we deal with, whether there are fertility options outside of their own country of residence. Ultimately, it's, there's no greater feeling than um, seeing a, a couple who have tried and tried and then fortunately have been, had, had some success. Um, I didn't understand at the start. I was, I was too young. We, we met when we were only 19. Um, so it was hard, yeah. And uh, there's, there's things that happen that maybe um, don't work out the best, but you've just got to keep going and not give up. And, uh, That's the key thing, is keep going. But in terms of the menopause and stuff, you just, you don't, you know, I didn't understand at that age. Um, whenever Kirsty first told me about it, um, I didn't really, I didn't really appreciate that it was real, that it was happening. Um, I thought that it was maybe just somebody had got it wrong or somebody had overreacted about something. Um, and it was only maybe whenever we started looking down the road of IVF that it really hit me that, that this is real and that um, we're going to need help. To, do you know to have a family? It's so. more the fertility side of it. You realise that you have no eggs, that you are going to have to. It's just not easy to get. It's, IVF is your own age, but we find it harder to get a donor. We find that there's more into, there's more involved. We gave a very good egg quality to create a very nice blastocyst. This is the main, you know, important factor, and that's the reason why we always all talk about age regarding egg quality. So we gave an excellent donor, okay, that was already fertility proven. She was having problems with thyroid that uh, wasn't, um, you know, investigated before. So we kind of, you know, tried to improve all her possible conditions, not only the problem of menopause, so endometrium, thyroid, vitamins, and then with a very good embryo, we were okay. It is scary and yeah. you have loads of questions in your head. You do be scared, you just think this chair's not biologically mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is the chair going to look like me? 
I mean, because you go through the menopause, you think, is my body going to do what I want it to do? Is it going to respond to medication? Yeah. Am I going to be able to carry a child because yes. my uterus was so small? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it turned out. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, the, the vast majority of people that we, we, we help um, that, that do travel, um, travel for um, a donor treatment. Mm -hmm. And I think um, in many respects, um, those sorts of fears uh, you know, are shared by lots of people. It's anonymous and it's private and we will only have this information in our clinic and in our Spain uh, egg donation bank just to have the traceability. Only if medical problems, which means imagine, you know, a cancer or something that really needs a transplant and this baby, you know, cannot find with their doctors in their countries anybody for, you know, the transplant or if it is involved in any you know legal aspect so we need the dna and so very specific situations that only in our courts will be accepted in a country like spain and like other european countries um you only know a certain amount of information about the donor yeah we didn't um, it's just were you, were you given sort of assurances that the, the donor was fit and healthy oh definitely we went over with yourself for consultation mm -hmm. remember time we done bloods and they have phenol match. So they take a picture of my face and the donor's face and mm. then they match. They match you on a database to to like the most uh, the most the person that has the most characteristics in common of Kirsty yeah. physically wise. Mm -hmm. Um so that the obviously the egg donor would be as close as possible as a little egg as Kirsty is. Yes. But that there well. helps because yes. at least I know the donor's gonna have my hair colour, right, my eyes, exactly. eye colour. Yep. So That's me and the right. child's gonna have a wee bit of similar we're going to be a wee bit similar. Yes, and you were, you were pleased with the pleased with the choice of clinic and, and also the way that you were treated. Oh, absolutely, a thousand percent. Well, thanks to you, Andrew, we wouldn't have got, we would never even heard of Tambry only for the International Fertility. Yeah, mm -hmm. Tambry are a great, mm -hmm. a great clinic, very friendly, very um, you know they look after you when you go in, sure. and yeah. uh, you you feel like you're more than just a number in there, mm -hmm. and. Um, the even the even whenever you're back home, the uh, communication mm -hmm. with the with the emailing and stuff is 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 a hundred percent. There's mm -hmm. no there's no problems with getting questions answered. There's no um, yeah. so the support's really good that way as well. Our main objective is to help everybody to or patients to achieve a healthy pregnancy and, and a healthy baby and also this time we really were, were very much involved uh, with their with the whole treatment and all the team was cheering you know very happy that yes. uh, that we uh, helped them uh, to achieve this yeah of course there will be scientific developments um, we are participating with our foundation in improving success rates in improving technologies so on one hand there will be more optimization in the lab to um, avoid a human uh, error uh, there will be more involvement of artificial intelligence to improve even more, so that you use the data of previous cycles and previous patients to uh, be able to optimize even more the fertility solutions you would like to give to your patients. And I think a very important point, um, but also very important here at Tambra is that, uh, that each patient is unique. Um, every female is different, every body is different. So we need to optimize and personalize the treatments to each patient's uh, needs.